Hey everyone, I promise this video isn't clickbait. Um, there are a lot of people who still think autism is fake. Coming up, autism. Is it real or just another excuse for kids these days to forget their manners? You know what autism is? I'll tell you what autism is in 99% of the cases. It's a brat who hasn't been told to cut the act out. Autism is an entirely fake disease that does not exist. exist. Call it what you want. Call it what you want. Call it what you want. But don't call it autism. But don't call it autism. But don't call it autism. Even on my channel, I still get comments once in a while saying autism is fake, or I get conspiracy theories. It's part of the autism syndicate, which is designed to promote globalism and keep America dumb and medicated and all these different things. I mean, what are you gonna do? Some people believe the earth is flat still. So some people believe what they wanna believe and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, part of the main reasons why people deny autism is real is because they cannot see it. Now in severe autism, definitely you can see that. Um, a lot of people with severe autism will have bite marks. They'll do a lot of rocking and things like that. Some of them drool. Um, completely nonverbal or they have no eye contact whatsoever. So with severe autism, it's a lot easier to tell. Um, but those who are higher up on the spectrum, it becomes even more difficult to convince someone that they actually have some kind of neurological condition. Um, I find that ironic because there's little kids who can detect autism in our kids right away when they do have play dates and things like that. Um, they, they mix with our kids and Already, you can tell that they're like, hey, what's going on with your kid? He talks differently or he thinks differently or he keeps talking about one thing over and over and over again. And we're like, yeah, that's because he has autism. And little kids are almost immediately accepting of it, which is kind of funny because there's so many adults who are like, ah, just a bratty kid, needs a good spanking, needs some good firm discipline. And <laughs> yeah, it's frustrating, I know. Many of you are probably nodding your heads like, yep, been there, had a family member tell us they just needed a good spanking. So. Um, I want to get more into the scientific reasons why autism is real instead of just focusing on my opinion. Um, you'll get that a lot is, you know, hey, autism is real because I said so. I'm a parent of someone with autism. How dare you? Um, instead, I want to take a more scientific approach. And again, it's not going to convince everybody. Some people will believe whatever they want to believe, but let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the first argument for autism is MRI high definition fiber tracking. All this is is fancy talk for someone going into an MRI machine and having their brain mapped. All the connections, the, the channels, the cables, the tracking in their brain is all mapped out. And what they found is with people who have autism, um, their brain is mapped much differently. The connections are much different from those who have um, neurotypical functions in many cases, not all. There's, there's some cases where they, they even said it's frustrating because they look very very much like normal brains in some autistic individuals. But the point is um, many who have had these brain scans um, with autism have shown very different brain activity. One such example is the case of Temple Grandin. She's kind of the, if you don't know, she's the poster child for those who have autism. She went in on an episode of 60 Minutes, they scanned her brain, they've asked her the same questions they asked neurotypical people, and they found that her brain behaved much differently and they even show the scans. I'll put those up on screen. You can see them here. And basically the autistic brain in this case overanalyzes um, the information being requested and searches all parts of the brain, especially the visual parts of the brain um, when it comes to finding an answer. So in effect, um, this can look like to some as mental retardation because they ask someone with autism a question and they just kind of sit there and think and process like they don't know the answer, when in fact, they're searching all of their databases, all of their archives, looking for the right information because they can't prune, they don't set A, B, C, D maps in their brain. It goes to every letter of the alphabet, every um, numerical figure, kind of like a computer when you ask it to do something and it searches all the files instead of just going to that one specific address. Um, that's kind of how um, the autism brain functions, at least the, the way I understand it based on these results. Um, so there's a, a very compelling argument for autism based on these findings. They're getting better and better at the research. Um, I, continue, I encourage you to look at the links below and do your own research on high definition fiber tracking in the brain. I spend the most time on this part because this is the, the biggest argument for autism, that the autistic brain behaves differently from those um, who are neurotypical. That's the whole argument right there, right? When you see someone with autism and people are like, hey, your kid looks normal, what's the big deal? Um, that's the argument. Just because you can't see into their brain doesn't mean they don't have autism, 
right? And we've had this argument so many times about, especially me being uh, religious, people saying, if I can't see it, I don't believe it. Well, I mean, look at the dark ages. We had the plague, we had all sorts of microbiology problems, um, contaminations, surgeons not washing their hands because they didn't know there was these little microorganisms and viruses and bacteria. They didn't know what they didn't know. And once the microscope was invented, they had a much better time convincing people that these little germs were real, that it wasn't just a bunch of black magic hocus pocus, that kind of thing. And same thing with autism. As we get better in our research and in our findings, more and more people will get on board with acknowledging, it's like the first step, acknowledging that autism is real. Okay, the second reason why autism is real um, is Fragile X. Now what Fragile X is, is a mutated gene on the X chromosome called the FMR1 gene. And it creates all sorts of neurological problems. So there you have a direct um, genetic trace to autism. And in, it's not in all cases, I don't wanna give you the wrong impression, um, it's only in some cases of those who have Fragile X, um, but there is a correlation there. And that's something that should be noted, is that we have found a genetic marker um, that leads to autism. And, and that's definitely a, a breakthrough for the autistic community as well as the Fragile X community. Okay, the third thing I wanna talk about is blood testing. So taking blood samples. Um, there has been a couple of tests. One has been saliva, detecting proteins in those who have autism. The other thing is blood tests. There's a recent um, study done where they they've taken 83 autistic individuals and I believe 76 neurotypical individuals and they did blood tests on all of them and they found 97% of the time they could trace autism in those who had certain kinds of metabolites in their bloodstream. Now 97% accurate, that's really accurate. So um, that also throws into question, you know, the whole blood analysis thing, especially in babies. They're trying to define autism in babies and even in utero and detect autism early on. So th this kind of disrupts the whole, you know, do, do vaccines cause autism? Because the earlier they can detect autism, um, the more uncredible the whole vaccine debate becomes. And I don't want to start a debate here. Man, that, that is... We were thinking about doing a video about autisms and vaccines. We may still do one, but there's still so much we don't know. And so many people want to fight about this online. I know it's an emotional topic and there's so much witch hunting going on and things like that, that we'll just kind of avoid that for now. And if you leave something in the comments about it, we'll probably just be like a uh, pass for now. Um, again, we may, might address this later and we hope to, but in the meantime, um, that's one of the, the biggest I guess you could say arguments for autism is they're detecting um, certain things in the bloodstream. Okay, the next thing I want to address, number four, is psychological studies. Now, the main point of contact when you go to get an autism diagnosis is usually a psychologist. A lot of people think psychology is a soft science. I hate psychology, it's a soft science. Eh, I kind of beg to differ. I, I don't think it gets its due credit. Um, these professionals, that's what they make a living doing is studying human behavior. They talk to neurologists, they talk to doctors, they, they talk to all kinds of people and do research on this. And, you know, I, I think there's a wealth of information there that shouldn't be taken for granted. And so that's definitely uh, an argument for autism is when you talk to psychologists. I don't know if a psychologist who says, yeah, autism is, is made up. We've done plenty of studies and the the findings are all over the place. It's it's non-conclusive. No, and every time I've talked to a psychologist, they're like, yeah, autism is real and we're narrowing down, we're, we're, we're clearing up the misdiagnoses because a lot of people like to bring that up, like, hey, this child was misdiagnosed. They actually had ADD or OCD or something like that. And yeah, that can happen. Okay, fair enough. But um, the majority of the time, the, the diagnoses are accurate and um, do help people find the help that they need. The last thing I want to talk about, similar to Fragile X, the fifth reason is a tuberous, I hope I'm saying this right, tuberous sclerosis. This is essentially a, a condition where people get benign tumors based on their, it's a, a faulty gene and it, it causes the benign tumors, but it also can cause autism. So same argument for Fragile X, it, it can cause autism, it's genetic. Um, there's definitely some ample evidence there um, to prove autism is real. So yeah, I think that about covers it. This was not a comprehensive list. I just wanted to give five reasons, help those who are struggling, um, convincing others that autism is real. I know that sounds like a silly thing to say, but such are the times we're living in.
Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, obviously, as I mentioned before, this video will become dated. Do your own research. Um, keep looking and studying, and you'll be amazed at the things you find and that the scientific community is, is just moving forward on this. And I'm grateful for that too, because as someone who has autistic kids myself, um, all, all the help we can get, that's, that's a wonderful thing. So um, hope that was helpful and this video has gone on long enough, so take care.